thing about the, the other nice thing about this job is you get to eyeball the lot. Nothing has to be too precise as long as you can kill the leaves. Incidentally, the only reason I'm throwing all my scrap paper on the floor is it upsets Matthew. One of my favorite hobbies around here is annoying the crap out of him. I'm not sure I wanted to hear that. You heard it this morning. Okay, so. Next step is introduce vacuum and spray. Yeah, I taped it all down. It just kind of occurred to me to try it. No, I have no idea if I'm even plugged in. <laughs> now you'll notice there's a piece of sealant tape around the hose up here that's going to help us quite a bit, believe it or not. Now what Matthew's doing here is he's pressing down in the corners. One of the most uh, common problems we have with this mold is bridging right in here. But once it's all down, it's down. Of course, once you get it going here, just kind of listen for the hissing. I think it's right. Uh -oh. No more hiss. How's the vacuum? Yep, the vacuum is pulling a good 30 inches. So, what we're watching for is to make sure the tape gets pulled down. The back pulls down hard on it. Yeah, if it, if it shows much air at all around here, it means you've got leaks somewhere. It's a leak somewhere. So this is going to be our resin line. Notice I kinked it so that we won't lose any vacuum when we puncture the bag with it. Even though we're going to lose it for a second when I puncture this. Thank you. 
that says it's good for. If anybody hasn't seen this stuff, pre-catalyzed, it's just plain black. Hmm. How long does it take? Um, depends on how much catalyst cat you use in it. I usually do it about one to one and a quarter percent. This is Azox catalyst. And I can't remember the exact properties, so you'll have to ask Matthew when there's 20 minutes off. Yeah, the Azox, you get about the same amount of working time, but once it begins to cure, it develops the hardness a lot quicker. So, you'll probably demold it before you guys breathe them out. You go off that This is definitely good. It's about 150% of it. Really good. So, we have 1.25 liters, one and a quarter liters of resin. One and a quarter percent is about just a smidge over 15 cc's, which is why I like the measuring metric. Um, it's much, much easier than using standard because if you're doing it at one percent, one liter equals 10 cc's of, of this stuff. <coughs> Actually, I should sit this thing and do it right. Matthew, would you believe I just had exactly enough? <laughs> that would have been embarrassing. So, drop that in. Start mixing. Gotta make sure that this mixes completely. I mean, with just a little smidge of catalyst, it's kind of hard to make sure that it completely solves into the resin. You know, you figure eights back and forth, scrape the sides, scrape the bottom, make sure that it's completely in there. Because the next thing that can destroy your project worse than leaks is, of course, part of your resin not catalyzing. What do you mean by free, free catalyzing? That's what said. Before it was catalyzed. Before he added cows. Yeah, it's probably mixed about good. Now, I chopped this hose kind of funny. This is to make sure it doesn't clamp down to the bottom of the bucket. The way we used to do it, was we tape it to a stick. But I decided this way is just easier for me. Oops. And there we go. Yes, yeah, get as close as you guys want to. This is not going to be an issue. Now you see it, it really races across this stuff. And the reason we only do it halfway across is so because we want it to come up from the other side. As you can see, it's doing it right along here. That way you know that the bottom is completely saturated. A lot of times we perforate the pour to make it flow through it easier, and this time we didn't. But that's because we're using easier material to flow through anyway. See how clear the glass gets, you can actually see the balsa flow through it pretty easily now. But yeah, the whole point of this is, of course, the vacuum sucks out all of the air it can, leaving only the space between the weaves of the cloth and the, and the wood. 
and then of course we replace that those air spaces with with the resin with no, nothing else. It makes for almost a perfect resin to glass ratio, which creates a stronger part. Just one little spot there that's kind of holding out. But other than that, it looks like we have a pretty close to perfect infusion. Which is <laughs> Oh yeah, if you uh, if you have some spots that are really uh, being stubborn, you can lift this stuff a little bit. You see how it kind of bridged in some resin right there, and then went away when I let go. You can do that. It's a good trick. You don't want to have to do it too much. Thank you. I was running out of resin. Because, of course, that particular bit of bad news can mean that you're going to have bubbles in it, that kind of thing. But it looks like we've got, yeah, it's all in there. So now, all we have to do is wait. We're going to leave this under vacuum until uh, the resin kicks. And by the, hopefully by the time the rest of the guys are done here, it'll be hard enough to pop out of here and we can see how it came out.